Since the dawn of time, we've looked up at the stars and wondered, will we ever reach them? But there's a problem. The universe is unimaginably vast. Even traveling at the speed of light, the fastest speed we know, it would take more than four years to reach the nearest star, and millions of years to reach another galaxy. So the question emerges, could we go faster than light? According to Albert Einstein, the speed of light, around 299,792 kilometers per second, isn't just fast. It's the ultimate limit. Nothing with mass can ever reach it, let alone surpass it. Why? Because the closer an object gets to the speed of light, the more energy it needs to accelerate. And to actually reach that speed, it would need infinite energy. An impossible demand under the laws of physics as we know them. So, under Einstein's theory of relativity, faster than light travel is forbidden. But here's the twist. Einstein never said space itself couldn't move faster than light. And that small loophole changes everything. During the Big Bang, the universe didn't just expand, it inflated at speeds faster than light. Not because objects were flying through space, but because space itself was stretching. And that idea opened the door to one of the most fascinating theories in physics, the Alcubierre drive. Proposed by physicist Miguel Alcubierre in 1994, this concept doesn't involve a spaceship moving faster than light through space. Instead, it involves bending space around the ship. The ship stays still inside a warp bubble, while space contracts in front and expands behind, effectively carrying the ship faster than light from one point to another. It's like standing on a rug while someone rolls it forward beneath your feet. You're not moving. Space is moving for you. Sound like science fiction? It is. But here's the kicker. The math checks out. According to general relativity, this kind of space-time manipulation is theoretically possible. But, and it's a big but, it requires something we've never confirmed to exist. Negative energy. This isn't just an absence of energy. It's a hypothetical form of matter with completely opposite properties. Instead of pulling things in like gravity, it would push them away. Some quantum phenomena, like the Casimir effect, suggests that negative energy might exist briefly in tightly controlled environments. But these effects are tiny and fleeting, far from what we'd need to power a warp bubble. So is faster than light travel possible? Not by moving through space, no. But maybe, just maybe, by bending space itself. If bending space is the key, then there's another concept that could, in theory, make faster than light travel possible. Wormholes. A wormhole is a hypothetical tunnel connecting two distant points in space-time. Imagine folding a sheet of paper, placing two distant stars side by side, and poking a hole through. A shortcut through the universe. A cosmic cheat code. Einstein's equations allow for wormholes under certain extreme conditions. But again, we hit the same problem. They would require negative energy to remain stable. Without it, the tunnel collapses before anything can pass through. Even if one existed, no known mechanism could keep it open long enough or wide enough for a spacecraft. And then there's the issue of paradoxes. If faster than light travel allows us to reach distant places instantly, could it also allow time travel? According to relativity, yes. Because when you bend space-time enough, you don't just connect two places, you connect two points in time. That opens the door to causality problems. Could someone arrive before they left? Could events undo themselves? These paradoxes aren't just philosophical. They represent deep challenges in how we understand time, reality and cause and effect. It's one reason why many physicists believe nature has built-in protections, like requiring impossible conditions to keep faster than light travel off limits. But despite these barriers, the idea won't die. Some theorists have suggested that if certain particles, like tachyons, exist, they would naturally travel faster than light. But tachyons are purely hypothetical. They've never been detected, and if they did exist, they'd violate many of the principles that hold modern physics together. Others look to quantum entanglement, where particles seem to affect each other instantly, even across vast distances. 
But this instant connection doesn't transmit usable information. There's no way to use entanglement to send messages or ships faster than light. In short, there are strange phenomena that hint at loopholes, but no confirmed mechanism to exploit them. Even the Alcubierre Drive, once the darling of sci-fi enthusiasts and warp drive dreamers, has lost some of its shine. New calculations show that to create a warp bubble, you'd need the mass energy equivalent of an entire planet, or even more. And unless we discover something radically new, that kind of energy is simply out of reach. But here's what matters most. Faster than light travel is not impossible because of our imagination. It's impossible, for now, because of the limits of our knowledge. And knowledge changes. A century ago, we couldn't split the atom. Two centuries ago, the idea of flying was madness. Five centuries ago, we thought Earth was the center of everything. So perhaps the real question isn't whether faster than light travel is possible. It's whether we're willing to keep asking, even when the answer is not yet. Because every scientific leap from fire to flight to quantum mechanics, began with a question that sounded absurd. And among the stars, there are still answers waiting for us to catch up.